What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode. And this is Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. And y'all, you know, the focus here is we always like to lock in and talk about how we can further help student athletes elevate, talking about stories, strategies, and success. So today, man, I'm 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 super excited, man. I got I got my guy on here, man, Mr. Mr. Josh Phillips, he's a junior at, at Gramlin State. But man, when I, I was watching the Last Chance U docuseries, and I, I, I just really could appreciate his spirit. I could really appreciate my man's hunger. He, he was out here, okay? And then he was throwing that thing down, something crucial. <laughs> Josh, man, welcome, bro. Hey, welcome to be on hey, the ball. how you doing? How's everybody doing? It's a pleasure to be on the show, and I appreciate, I appreciate all the love and watching, uh, watching uh, Last Chance U getting to see a little bit of me on there and, yeah bro uh, pleasure to be here yeah man most most definitely man most most definitely so man josh so like i mean i know we just were introduced to you like you know at, at elac out there and you know like la and everything like that but bro like where 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 is the upbringing for you where are you are you are you born, born and raised cali where, where are you born uh talk, talk to us. yeah so Pretty much born and raised Cali, uh, born in LA, and then early on actually moved over to London, where uh, most of my family's from, and uh, lived over there for a couple of years as a kid. Actually, happened to have uh, dual citizenship over there in the uh, United Kingdom as well, and just ended up moving back to California uh, with my mom's and kind of moved all all around Cali, SoCal. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You lived in London, bro. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All my 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 mom, everything originally from over there. She came over here, uh, nursing and everything, and just ended up staying over here. But we went back when I was a kid with me and my brother. So we uh lived over there. I were dual citizens for there and here. Man. So what? looking to go. That's home as well. So looking to go back over there sometime. Wow. What was it like, gr like gr growing up a little bit in London, like spending some time there? What, what was that like in comparison to like being, you know, being in on the West Coast and everything like that? Yeah, uh, I only have a couple memories because I was I was around for four years old at the time when I was. I spent like two years up there, but it's just a lot different. Just mainly, most thing I remember just how people, the accents and how people talk. From I used to have an accent when I was a little kid, apparently from my mom telling me, uh, and just changing that. But I don't think it's it's that much different from what I've experienced. My family over in the UK is just like the people I know over here just talk different, just live a different, a little bit of a different lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, man, that's man, that's dope though. That's dope because everybody, you know, a lot a lot of people. Because I I've, I've talked with some people that even are around me, and a lot of times depending on you know, the community people are brought up in, some people mm -hmm. haven't even been like 30 miles, maybe 15 miles outside of their overall community. So man, I, I think that's just yeah. a great opportunity, you know, for you uh, getting, getting to I have mean, that. I think that, I do think that is something, something special. I'll be, I have some fa family over the world and being able to just go outside, even basketball has brought me that too, being able to travel a lot. Most of the way I've been able to see even all of this country just through basketball. And being able to travel around with my teams, AAU teams, and our college teams, just getting to experience different different parts of the country and world. Man, yeah, that's what's up, bro. That, yeah, that's 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 definitely what's up. That, that's what's up, Josh. What? So, from you, you know, being being a, being a junior college player, you know, hooping, doing the open gym, doing the weight, doing like all that stuff, and yeah. then one day you find out that y'all about to have cameras all around you all the time like what yeah like what was that like because you live in like a real life truman show so like what what, what was it yeah, what was yeah, that like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to think of it like that it was it was a little bit scary i kind of thought oh they're gonna i didn't know how big it would be at, at first when they said oh netflix gonna be filming i thought oh, they might come a couple days a week do this but they were there from the very from summertime for every single day following cameras while i'm walking out the gym they got a Dude on the the hoverboard following me with the camera, doing stuff like that. So it's it was a little shocking. Uh, at first, I just tried to tune it out. Didn't think I'd really be on there much. 
and then it kind of picked up. Oh, you're getting mic'd up here, you're getting mic'd up there. And it's like, all right, this this is just what's going to happen, I guess. The camera's just going to be around, follow me everywhere. Like, I tried just not to look at them, try to act like they weren't there. But. Like, I mean, I understand that, right? Like, I understand trying not to look at it, but like knowing that a camera's on you in practice, like, it's like, does oh, it make yeah. you go harder or, or is, is it one of those things to where after a while, like, it just, it just becomes like, it's normally like, ah, you know, I'm not worried about that. It's just a regular part of practice. Yeah. I, it it kind of came like that after a while where it was, it was a regular part, but it's kind of like, I do want to show out as well. I, I'm a, if I could dunk the ball, I'm a dunk the ball. I kind of want to get this, especially in games that are practice. I know there's like an eye over my shoulder. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little bit harder just because I know it, if everybody's already watching me in, in the gym, now everybody's watching me on here. I'm not, uh, everybody in the world is going to see this. So. Yeah, but, man. At, at some point it was kind of, I know that you know that who the camera dudes are. They're on like a first name basis. So it's kind of like, oh, they're just there. And like, Dave just filming me. Fair, fair, fair enough, man. Fair enough. So the so so the inter- the interesting thing for me is like and and just like what you were sharing, knowing that they're following you every day, you know, for a span of however long it was, right? Because you said the summer all the way through, so that's like some months, which is which yeah. is crazy. Um, but e- even in the amount of time that they followed you, there's only like a little bit of your story that we got to see. Like, I didn't even know, just like what you said, the part about, you know, you being raised a little bit in London, yeah. but like, what did we not see on last chance you? And I, I ain't telling you, get no spoilers, nothing like that, but you know, this wasn't on, this wasn't on the series. So this ain't a spoiler. Yeah. Right. But, but what did we not see on, on, on the docu-series, you know, that, that, that lets us a little bit more into who is Josh Phillips? Uh, they did. They did cut out a lot of stuff I hadn't wanted to talk about on the show as much. I mean, we talked about it, but they cut it out just about my family life and kind of how I had grew up because I didn't have the the smoothest upbringing. Uh, the reason I even moved to London away from family uh, here was because of domestic violence things and things with my dad being in safe at home programs, going to battered women's shelters and stuff like that. So. There was stuff just with my family that they didn't get to interview any of my family members uh, and things on those notes. So they did kind of keep it a lot more personal just about me and sharing through my autism and basketball journey. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So so talk so talk a little bit more about that, Josh. Just with the – talk a little bit more about the – about mm-hmm. your journey with autism and the, and the reason why I'm, I'm asking that is because like i was even telling my wife when, when i when i was watching the show because my my understanding and this this is this is my own ignorance right but my understanding mm-hmm. was typically when you know i i, I think of uh, an individual who is who, who is living with with autism or you know who has been diagnosed with, with autism my, my understanding was the individual typically isn't as high functioning. And I'm like, but I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I'm seeing you up and down the court. I'm seeing, yeah. you, you know, uh, all this. And I'm like, wait a minute. So it, 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 was, it was shocking to me. So just, just like, just, just talk a little bit more about that, Josh. Help me understand, man. Give, give, give me some clear. Yeah. Uh, so, on, on so with that, I, I am high functioning. Uh, and I'm kind of proud that not a lot of people can tell or notice because it took me a long time to get here. I used to have times in school where I was shut down, being a fetal position, being a fetal position out on the playground for two hours because I shut down during uh, during recess. Had my hood up, uh, never talked to nobody, was nonverbal at first. Uh, but it's just been a lot of things that, especially my mom, my family have put me through and just like help me and go into things, ABA therapy and all these stuff that kind of helped me be able to function a lot better. And one of those just happened to be uh, sports as well. So they thought it would be a good idea to be put in some sports. So I, I tried a lot of different things before basketball. I was, I skateboarded just because as a solo thing. I skateboarded a lot as a kid and even growing up, I played soccer at first, played just different things, just trying to get 
into some social activity and then like be able to let out some emotions as well. And I kind of just saw my brother playing basketball because he, uh, I, my brother's two years older than me. He was kind of my, my motivation for that. He would, we would walk home from school, go to the gym every day. He would just take me, just take me. And oh, even if it's just us playing, we're going to play one on one, doing this, just play one on one. And at first I was like, okay, I got to get good at this now. I want to be as good as him because I want to. I want to win these games when we play one on one. I want to, and then be better than the old heads in the gym at 24. And through that, I kind of was able to put some of my other stuff to the side. Okay, I had, I have this, and I'm well in basketball. I mean, a lot of stuff with autism. I don't got to talk or really be social with people as much because I mean we're just hooping. I don't have to really express myself like that or do a lot of things with it's basketball. So. I get to just kind of just be me on the court without a lot of the outside, a lot of the outside distractions and things that would get to me. And then yeah. it kind of just motivated me to play growing up behind my brother. Huh. Yeah, yeah, man. So, so like through this journey, when has there ever been a point to where you needed to communicate that? To teammates or or it was more so you know th- th- this was something that you didn't necessarily feel you needed to communicate to, to teammates because it wasn't affecting anything or, or anything like that just in your you know in, in the journey uh, yeah well for me uh i never have i never have until i i got up here to grammy and told a teammate before about my autism i haven't really told anybody in my life my coaches some of my coaches knew uh because of school ieps and things and my AAU coaches told by my mom but Never, never any teammates because I didn't think it mattered as much. Even if I had something, I was passionate for the game. If I if I had any type of breakdown of this, it could all just be put the passion to, passion to the game, and they wouldn't really be thinking too much too much about it. Or they didn't need to know about my autism because it didn't affect how it was on. It didn't affect how we gonna play together on the court. So. And then outside of that, I'm just kind of isolated to to myself, so it's not really something that would come up. Or I just kind of I just, I really just kept it to myself. Some coaches had known, but I really just am pretty private about it. Uh, I wouldn't have told Netflix at first if they didn't come to me with it and Coach Moses, uh, but they just pulled me to a side one day and say, "We know about this, and we do want to talk about it." And I just kind of had to make that decision there: am I going am I going to tell the world about this? And let everybody know the secret that I've been hiding my whole life that I have autism, or keep it like that. What made you decide to tell the world, Josh? Uh, my fiance, really. I I called my girl on the phone, and I was like, because I I had thought maybe they might find out. It was like, hey, they found out about this. They found out I got autism. I'm about to have my interview, and they just asked me if they if they could talk about it. And I was I I was on the side. I really don't want to tell anybody. But then she says, and like a lot of people in my have told me, my family, that it's something I should be proud of, and that I should talk about it and let people know about myself because there's nothing that I should be ashamed of because of it. That if anything, it's just a strength. It's one of the added strengths to what I have. And then I should be proud of proud of this and where I've been able to get because of it. And why not share it with the world? that people aren't going to look at me differently. People aren't going to hate on me because of it. That, that's more of the mindset I had that I was going to get looked at a lot differently, maybe get some hate because of it. And looked at like I was different or weird. That's kind of the stigma I've kind of had behind it my life, for my life. So it is, it is good to see the positives that have, that have come from me sharing it, that it has been seen as a positive thing, and that that is really nice. So has, has it been, has, like, did you feel a, did you feel like a, a, a weight was lifted off of you when you, like, when you shared, did you feel like a, a weight after you shared and, you know, after you, you started getting some people, you're sharing, you know, some positive encouragement, some affirmation, like, were you like, oh, like, I feel, I feel lighter now, I feel a little bit better now? Yeah, I, I kind of have, it's not something that I've really thought about, but just, and you say that it's 
in practice when I'm or in a lot of things whenever I'm acting how I would normally act, which I know might be a little different than others, is kind of people know people know now instead of just thinking that they can maybe put a reason to it if I'm acting a little some type of way rather than just oh he's just acting weird. They kind of have I, I wouldn't want to use it for as an excuse, but oh he has autism and, and this he might not be the most social he might not do this instead of just he don't like anybody or he's antisocial and he just don't want to talk to people i think it kind of has lifted the weight off my shoulders and having to hide it a lot mm -hmm. and not tell anybody about it now anybody could know and i will be open about it and because i've seen that it isn't something that people are like oh and i'm shocked because of it or think i'm weird because of it it makes me more open to to just tell people and be living in that and kind of live that truth. For sure, for sure, for sure. So if there's, you know, if so if there's somebody out there, you know, that's hearing this uh, ep episode and, you know, they, you know, they seeing you and they, they, they've learned about your story and everything like that. And like, let's say they may have a child that, you know, has, has been diagnosed with, with autism, um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they, they may be in that stage of where they just don't understand or don't know how to relate to that child. Like, is there a word of encouragement or, or something that, you know, you would just sh share with them knowing that uh, knowing that you've gone the route uh, with, with your mom and the learning and all the different yeah. things that, that you've you've been able to learn thus far? Mm -hmm. I would say that even if your child is difficult and maybe you may feel that you can't relate to them the most, just find the little things that that y'all might enjoy together, that they might enjoy and just appreciate those, that even if they aren't the most talkative, that they still love you even if it's in their own way, that there's still a lot of love there even if it's not communicated the best. And just make sure to show that them well even, even if they don't understand it or take it the best all the time. Yeah, man, that's real, man, that's real, that's real. So I saw you talking about your brother um, cause I saw, yeah. you know, cause I, I, I mean, I, I feel like I, I, I saw the, I saw like the sizzle reel that, that he, that he put together for you. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, where, so where, where, where is your brother? And like, is, is he still in Cali or where, where, where is your brother? And how's y'all doing? Yeah, he, he's still in Cali. He's been pooping uh, over the place. He just came back. He came back from Africa in the summertime, pooping over there in the Korea league. Uh, and then just looking to go for more overseas, overseas stuff. He's just been hooping. He uh, does a lot of social media stuff as well, being on TikTok, kind of get on Instagram and everything like that. So he he's back in Cali, but I've been kind of more out in the South now, so I haven't really been back there hooping with him and being able to spend that time with him. But he's he's still over there living good. That's what's up. So I okay, because when I saw the when I saw the video, I just assumed that he was like a videographer. But that's dope to know that, you know, he's still hooping and everything like that. Yeah. He ain't no videographer. Uh we both did, we we uh both were kids edit videos and stuff like that. But he just he just put that together in his free time and watched the show, found some clips and uh because he had been watched it, he was supporting me a lot, wanted to watch it all the first day, been watched it. He said I had to go back, I started recording these clips. I put them all together so you have some, I just want to send it to you and made it for me and it was kind of a great a great thing to put out at the time it was just a great i thought it was just an amazing video to be able to have and then to share with everybody so i of course wanted to shout him out on that and just because he's yeah. showing a lot of love and i really appreciated it yeah man and i mean i think that's like a super a super dope full circle moment especially knowing that you know <laughs> he was the one that like like that w was with you when when you were starting out hooping and everything like yeah. that and then now you know he's overseas hooping, but you know you're you're you're, yeah. you're going through the ranks, did the JUCO, and you know now now you have mm -hmm. Division One program, and and then he did the tape. That's pretty. That's pretty dope, man. That's full. That's a dope full circle moment. That's a dope full circle. Yeah, moment. I think it is dope full circle. We both get to, I think, and calling him on the phone, we both get to appreciate where we're at right now, because no, we or other people didn't think we would even get this far. He think he'll be playing pro, thinking I'd be here D one, uh, being able to get what I could get. I think we we both appreciate it more than more than anything. I like we like to share that together, and now it's kind of oh, 
everybody people get to see you hooping. Um, everybody can see who went on the TV, really on the TV screen, and you made it where you're supposed to be. And we still is looking forwards. He gonna go get what he he deserves still at the pro level. I'm gonna get what I deserve here at college and just make the most of it, and just kind of make the most of the moment as well. I'm with you, man. I'm with you, Josh. Why, why Grambling? And what's that HBCU lifestyle for you like? Because I know it's way different than the West Coast. Uh yeah. <laughs> so Grambling, um, they just felt like when I was when I was on the phone with them and they had offered me and everything, it just felt like family. It just kind of that 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 Southern love and that HBCU love. They felt like they just felt like they was a good program. They gonna take care of me. And coming down here to the South, I had uh, before I came, I had left Cali and I was in Alabama with my with my girl living down there. So I got to experience the South a little bit, and I'm kind of like I I love it down here. Southern hospitality, the Southern charm, everything. It's it's kind of it's kind of nice. It's more of a quiet life. So then I went down to Grambling, and I was like, yeah, I love it. Uh, HBCU. I already seen how the fans be coming out, showing they got the step and all the majorettes and the band and everything. So it's just a it's a a nice environment and a good place I would love to hoop at. And then a little bit I could see uh the Southern ball favors bigs a lot more. And Cali ball is a little running gun, Steph Curry type, type a little bit of ball like that. And down south they kinda like to utilize the bigs, play play that bully ball. Like I felt it kinda fit it fit my play style. Fair enough, man. Yeah, I mean, that, we've, been that, to, we've been able to knock up uh, some good teams this year this season, going on and looking to make a good run. So I think it's all it's all been nice. Starting conference play today. That's that's dope, man. That's dope. That's dope. All right. So now 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 we're gonna we're gonna get ready to transition, Josh. We're gonna get ready to transition, man. And now th- this is the dear student athlete segment, right? And this is the segment where I give you the opportunity just to share, you know, a nugget of wisdom or just some insight that you want to share with a current student athlete or a uh, aspiring student athlete. So mm-hmm. you got the floor, Josh, you got the floor. Okay. Well, dear student athletes, I would say just no matter what sport you're doing, what position you're in, just work the hardest that you can. No matter what you can't, you can't teach, you can't teach effort. So you might as well give all that you can because it's going to show. And it, it, that that alone could take you places. Even if you're not the most talented or the most skilled, you could have the most effort on the team. And that is going to put you in the, at the top. And just appreciate the moment while you're there. Just take a t- take some time to appreciate appreciate playing in high school, middle school, playing at AAU. Appreciate all those games. You're not going to get them back. And you're just going to be looking. You're going to be looking back on them for a long time, just missing those moments. There it is. There it is. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. All right. So now, now we're going we're gonna to lighten up a little bit, Josh. We're going to lighten up a little bit. And this is the segment mm-hmm. I like to call This or That. All right. So yeah. this, this is going to be a little, little bit of rapid fire. And I'm going to ask you, you know, you're going to get two options. You're going to say one or the other. Josh, yeah. are you ready? I'm going to go ready. Go ahead. Let's get to it. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Popeyes or Chick Fil A? Popeyes. Uh, I take Chick Fil A. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll go Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Oh Chick-fil-A. man! All right. All right. West Coast or the Dirty South? South. Oh. Mm. Down south. Abroad or the states? I stay in the states. Okay. Okay. Well, nice dog. I stay in the states. Fair enough. Summer or winter? Summertime. Work hard or play hard? Work hard. There it is. Play hard. (laughs) I work hard. (laughs) Fair enough, man. Fair enough. Fair enough. Man, Josh, I'm about to let you get ready to get out of here. But before we do, uh, I always like to just give you the opportunity to, this is what I call the winner circle of the week. And this is an opportunity mm-hmm. for you to to shout out somebody that you feel is like either an underdog or somebody that just, you know, hasn't hasn't received their just due yet. And you're like, John, yeah. I want to shout them out because they dope. And I think you should have them on your show next. So who would that person be for you? 
Uh, for me, that person would be honestly my teammate and my roommate, Cartier Gordon. I think he going off he going off this season and he been through a lot. Uh, he uh he work he work his he work real hard and work his ass off to be where he at today. And he's someone over here he's someone over here that I respect and I think is bringing a lot to my play style and Grambling as well. He helping put he helping push the team forward. So I would I would say him. There we go. There we go. Josh, please let all the people know where they can, how they can find you, follow you, connect with you at this time. Uh, you can find me and follow me on Instagram at Josh Phillips with uh, three L's and then uh, also on Twitter at Josh Two Phillips. There we go. There we go, man. Josh, I, I appreciate you, man, taking the time to, to sit down for for the interview. Uh, bro, really, really means a lot. And like I told you before, we, we, we locked in and bro, oh, yeah. I wish, wish you all the best, man. Hey, we locked in. I, I appreciate you having me on here. It was great coming and talking with you. Uh, you know we're going to stay in touch and we're going to be locked in. I, I just appreciate the love. Most definitely. Most definitely. Everybody out there, if, you, if you're if watching this on YouTube, be sure to smash the uh, subscribe button and also drop a comment down below. Man, show show Josh some love because, man, he, he's really out here changing the game in more ways than just on the floor. Uh, so so be st- make sure to uh, stay tapped in with, with him. And family, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.